Satan is a liar, amen? And he's going to try you. He's going to tempt you. He's going to do all kinds of things to you. Take your Bibles and go to James, the first chapter. Father, you see us here tonight, dear God. You see every soul that's sitting out there in that congregation. So, Lord, I'm asking you, the Lord, that you would anoint my lips and anoint every ear in this place to be able to receive what you'd have us to have this night, dear God. And, Father, we just want to thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to start in verse number 2. Are you tired of the devil? Amen. Well, here's what we got to do, guys. Y'all listen to this very carefully, and we're only going to be in chapter 1. Are y'all impressed? Okay, chapter 1, and we're going to start in verse number 2. It says, well, we're going to read out of the King James first. It says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into different temptations. You're going to fall into temptation. The devil's there. He's going to do everything he can to lead you astray. Amen? But what did that song say? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen? And it, says, it goes on and it says, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. We're not a patient people. True? People die because they have no patience. That's happened. People kill other people because they don't have no patience. We have to understand, we have to let patience work in our lives. If we do not have patience, we're going to let the devil take us. We have to pray. We have to ask God for wisdom. Listen to verse number 5. Well, let me back up. Let's read verse number 4, but I'm going to read it out of this other Bible. It says, uh, so let it grow. In other words, let uh, faith grow, and when, it is, when you endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Nothing. You're going to be that perfect man. Verse number 5 says, if you need wisdom, ask generous God, and he will give it to you. As Brother Steve said here this morning, or somebody did, God said he's no respect of a person. If he'll give you wisdom, he'll give you wisdom. You have to ask for it. But I'm going to tell you something. You are going to go through the temptations of life. Just because you're a Christian don't mean you're set aside and nothing's going to happen to you. You're going to go through a lot worse. Why? Because the enemy is fighting you. He's fighting you. He don't want you to grow. Amen? If you have God's wisdom, I'll guarantee you, you can get through a lot of things. Amen. Why? Because you're listening. You're not only listening, you're doing. Amen? Okay. Verse number 6 says, But let him ask in faith, not wavering. See, here's our problem. We waver. One minute, we're a Christian. The next minute, we're a sinner. One minute, we're a Christian. The next minute, we're a sinner. True? True? You ever wondered how many times during the day you're a Christian and the next minute you're a sinner? I want everybody to count it tomorrow, okay? Count how many times you're a Christian tomorrow and how many times you're a sinner. You can't waver. You have to walk that straight and narrow. Don't fall. I fell on the Christian side. <laughs> we have to. We have to walk that straight and narrow path. Amen? It's easy to waver. Why? Because we get weary. We see some of our, uh, let me put it like this. We see some of our other so-called brothers and sisters in Christ. They're doing this, Lord. You ain't slapped them in the head, so you ain't going to slap me in the head. You're going to get it. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but you're going to get it. Because the Bible tells us, when you know to do right and do wrong, what's it called? It's sin. What does sin do to you? That's exactly right. God said that he don't listen to sin, he won't mess with it. Amen? All right, guys, listen on. This is going to get good. 
It says, uh, verse number, let's read this. Let's read number six. It says, but let him ask in faith, not wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven by the wind and tossed. You're tossed. Now, let's be honest tonight. How many times are you tossed of being a Christian and being a sinner? Come on. It's easy. It's easy. You know, if God did us the way that he did people back in the Old Testament, none of us would be here today. You know, I get to think, this is one of my things. I get to thinking about people's souls out there that's dying and going to hell. And we're supposed to be church people. We're supposed to be pulling them in. Reeling them in to, to heaven. We do. We don't care. We don't care. We think, well, as long as we can get ourselves to heaven, I'm not worried about nobody else. What about that homeless man? What about that sister that don't know God? Whether you think, or let me put it like this, whether you like it or not, those people that cut you off, the people that's rude to you at Walmart, people that cuss you out, that's your brother and sister in Christ. Like it or not, that's your brother and sister. We may not have the same name, but all in all, we have the same blood because we belong to Jesus Christ. You just got some prodigal brothers and sisters in this world. You ever been there? Somebody prayed for you. Somebody kept praying. How many people do we see every day? I'll guarantee you we see more people that's not saved than we do people that is saved. How many times do we see somebody, we take the time and say, Lord, touch that person in a special way. You can tell they're hurting. They need you, Lord. You ever thought about that? But see, we're so worried about our own selves. We're waving back and forth. We're not concerned about others. True? We have to quit being like the sea. Tossed to and fro. Amen? All right. <clears throat> Verse number 7 says, For let that man think he shall receive anything, or let, let not that man think that he will, uh, shall receive anything of the Lord. Now listen to this Bible. It says, Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. If you're wishy-washy, y'all know what wishy-washy means? A flake. That's right. Amen. A lot of us. See, we have to understand. We say, well, God, why don't you answer my prayers? He's saying, why don't you do what I told you to do? Amen. Do you know the Bible tells you, and I can show you where the scripture is if you'd like to know. The Bible tells us that God does not answer sinners' prayers. You can call yourself a Christian, but if you're sinning, you're a sinner. So you wonder why your prayers are not being answered? Because you're sinning. Amen. We need the mirrors, Pastor. Okay, verse number eight. A double minded man is unstable in all of his ways. It says their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. Most of our loyalty is divided. Christian, sinner, Christian, sinner. Everything going good, we're Christian. Right? Or if something happens to one of our babies, we try to be a Christian. Oh, God, touch him. Please make him well. Don't we? But if we want to go out there and play in the world, we're like, who are you, God? You know, I feel this way about it. Now, really and truly, this is what we ought to do. If we want to be a sinner, we might as well throw in our hats, say, God, I'm just going to do what I want. I'm going to go to the casinos. I'm going to go bar hopping. I'm going to go man hunting. The guys are going to go women hunting. We're going to do whatever. What difference does it make? You're going to hell anyway. Is that true? 
You can't straddle the fence. You have to come to a point in your life, okay, God, I fully surrender all. If things are going good, some people's like, yay, Lord. Some people are just the opposite. If things are really going bad, oh, God, you got to get on that line there. That's straight and narrow. No matter if it's going good or it's going bad, you have to go on that straight and narrow path. Amen? Quit being double-minded. Is it hard not to be double-minded? I'll be the first one to tell you. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. If I was a sinner, the first thing I'd do, I'd go over to the casino. Not me. Well, I'd stop first and get my cigarette and beer. Because I know I'm going to hell anyway, so I'd go on over to the casino. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I mean, that's just what I'm saying. Oh, you work at the casino, Sister Pam? I'm sorry, girlfriend. I, I'm not talking about you. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm telling you what I would do. Because you see, before I got saved... There was no casinos here. You had to go to Las Vegas. So when I was a sinner, I always wanted to gamble. I never did do that. And I knew if I gambled, Steve, he would have sat there and got drunk. So I'd have spent all of his money. See what I'm saying? <laughs> but thank God for his deliverance. Amen? But we have to understand... It's no different than not doing what you're supposed to do in church if you go to the casino. It's no difference. God tells you to walk that straight and narrow path. Does he not? I get so sick and tired of, I don't watch TV, but when you see these preachers on TV, or I have seen them on TV, they stand up there and tell you all kind of garbage that makes me sick to my stomach. And then you go to... Roberts, me and Brother Steve went to Roberts today and had lunch. He said he didn't like his, but I did. But anyway, you see all kind of different denominations in Roberts. Every kind on a Sunday. You go there. You see some of the ladies with the big old buns on their head? <laughs> Most of them are white-headed, though. <laughs> but you do. You do. You see some of the people that are casual. I mean, you've got all these different denominations. That's not right. What's he going to be in heaven? One. One. I got to thinking about that today. I seen all them people while I sat down there eating. Some of them little ladies, not making fun of them, but, you know, they had their little hair up on top of their head. And I'm thinking, I'm looking down at myself. Uh, my hair down, my blue jeans on. <laughs> Something's wrong. That's right. Something is wrong. Something is wrong with the Christian world. And you know what it is? It's the people. It's the people in it. We better be begin to come into unity. It's not the label of a church that's going to get you to heaven. It's following Jesus Christ. Amen? But we have to learn that we cannot be double-minded. Either you get in there and go gung-ho, or you say, what does the Bible tell us over in Revelation? God tells us in His Word, He would rather for us to be what? Cold. That's right. That's right. And I, like I said, I'll be the first one to say at times, it's hard to do this. Verse number 9 says, Believers who are poor have something to boast about. For God has honored them. See, yeah. God has honored them, and those who are rich should boast that God has humbled them. They will fade away like little flowers in the field. Now, we're going to stop right there for a second. <clears throat> if we don't go through the rapture, we're going to die. That's a guaranteed sure fact. What happens to your body when you croak? I mean, when you die. It returns to dust. Amen? 
it's going to happen to all of us unless we see the rapture. We don't know that. So we have to understand time is short. Even it, how old are you, Brandon? 13. Even though he's 13 years old, really and truly, if he lives another 60 years, that's nothing. Nothing. Our lifespan is short, really. If you live to be 100 years old, it's nothing. And as I sat back, I was telling Brother Steve this the other day. As I sat back in the last three months that I've seen both of my parents die in three months, you know, you see them one day, the next day, they're gone. Both of them is gone within the last three months. That can happen to us. We don't have to be old to die. And we're not guaranteed tomorrow. God is calling us. Come on, Sue. Come on, Kat. Come on, Brandon. Have you? Come on, Emma. <laughs> You don't want to be left, right, girlfriend? Lord, don't <laughs> How many, really, now I want you to be honest. How many of you have ever known that God says, come on, Debbie. Come on, bye. Come on, what's your name? Crystal. <laughs> come on, Sister Grandma. Come on, Nidra. Come on, Red. Come on, Scotty. Come on, Crystal. We've all felt God's presence. We've all felt that. But no, we want to go. I'm coming, Lord. When? When? We better grab a hold of God while we got the opportunity. That's, e that's exactly right. I'm telling you guys, God is trying to tell us, grab a hold of, grab a hold of me. Amen? Let's go down a little bit further. Verse number 10 says, and those who are rich should boast, let me, no, number 11, I'm sorry. The hot sun rises and the grass withers. The little flowers droops and falls and its beauty fades away. In the same way, the rich will fade away with all of their achievements. Now, we're going to stop there. As I say all the time, Brother Steve said this morning, you've never seen a U-Haul behind a hearse. It's true. You're not going to take nothing with you. Really and truly, there's no sense in even going by new clothes when you die. That's right. Because you know what they do when you croak, I mean when you die? <laughs> them brand new clothes that you bought, whoever you bought them for, they cut them. It cut them in half. Yeah. So that's a waste of money. Amen? So we have to understand it don't matter what we have. True on this earth. As long as we got Jesus, we got everything. Everything, guys, we got him. Okay? Well, let's go down. <clears throat> Verse number 12. God blesses those who patiently do our testing and temptation. He's going to bless you. When you go through the testing and the temptation, God is going to bless you. Why? Because he just said in his word he would. Because you're saying, okay, God, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to do what you told me to do. Even though i got to go through this mess, I know that you're going to bless me. He's there. I'm telling you, like I told him the other night in church, God will be your daddy. God will be your mother. God will be your husband. He'll be anything that you allow him to let him be to you. Why? Because he loves us. He tells us in his word. Well, just think about it. Jesus died on the cross for you. Me. You, 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 you. Amen? Okay. Afterward, they will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. The crown of life. You know what that means? Heaven. You get to go to heaven. Amen. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the king. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
We're going to see the king. Amen. Aren't you glad? This world is sick. Amen. And sad to say, most of the people in it sick. Okay. And it says, and remember, when you are being tempted, do not say that God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong, and he never tempts anyone. Okay, now we're going to stop right there for a second. You know why we're tempted? Number one, that's the devil's job. Number two, we let the devil play with our minds. As Brother Scotty always says, next thought, please. Don't entertain a, a thought. Don't entertain that at all. Why? Because that is the way that Satan comes in. You give the devil an inch, he's going to be your ruler. We have to understand that Satan, as I said, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy you. So we have to say, okay, God, I'm going to stand upon your promises. I'm going to trust you with everything that's within me. Brother, Sister Sandy does. Sister Bai does. I'm going to do it. <laughs> you got to do it. If you don't do it, you're going to be left behind. Church is not just about coming to church saying, praise God, hallelujah, and go home and live like the devil the rest of the week. It's not. It's striving to be like Jesus was when he was on this earth. What does the word say? Without holiness, no man shall see God. You know what holy means? Pure. Clean. Well, we were saved by grace, yeah. You sure was. God, uh, Jesus crawled upon that cross because he loved you. That's his grace. But there's more to it than that. That's right. I wonder if I called Joel Longstein, he'd let me preach next Sunday morning. <laughs> uh, okay. <clears throat> Temptation. Here we go, guys. 14. Temptation comes from our, from our own desires, which entice us and drags us away from our own desires. Like I said, I could say, you know what? I'm going to the casino tonight, but Sunday morning I'm going to be in church. Or let me put it another way. <coughs> we'll leave the casino alone right now, okay? Let me, think of a, let me think of another place. Okay, Lord. I'm going to the Pelican Club. It is? I thought it was still over there. Who knows the Pelican Club still over in Louisiana? Raise your hand. You been there, Barbara? <laughs> anyway. Mildred's, the drunk tanks, okay, just say for instance, this coming Saturday night, you know what, I'm going to go over and have a few beers, that ain't going to hurt nothing, yeah, but Sunday morning I'm going to church, I'm Catholic, what you talking about, <laughs> no. sincerely, <laughs> but we have to understand that's the way most so-called Christians think today. I can go to the bar Saturday night and come to church Sunday morning. They're going to hell. That's what they're going to do. Come on, guys. Living a Christian life is not fun and games. It's striving to be what God's called you to be. Amen? It says, uh, verse number 15, it says, The desires give birth to sinful action. And when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. When you play with a fire, you're going to get burnt. I remember being a kid, my daddy had an old barrel out in the back. We was poor. We couldn't afford to get garbage cans and have them hauled off. We burn our trash in a garbage can. Well, me and my brother had this big old stick. And we go back there and we stir that fire up. Guess what? One day that fire went woof. 
guess what? We got burnt. We didn't play in that no more. But did we learn? No. Here's a good, fine example. Here's a fine example. Mother and Daddy one time, they went to town and left all five of us kids. I was the littlest one out of the bunch. I was about seven, eight years old, I guess. So my brothers decided that they wanted to play games. Okay. <clears throat> so my sister said, what kind of game are we going to play? There was five of us. Okay. So <clears throat> my oldest brother and my sister, they got on one side of the house. And me and my two other brothers, we got on the other side of the house. Now, this is outside the house, okay? Y'all know what cattails are? Okay. So we all went out to the sewer ditch and picked us all a cattail, okay? We decided we'd throw them cattails on the other side of the house, see who could catch them. And who didn't catch them, lost, okay? We did that two or three times. Well, that got kind of boring, okay? Well, my second to the oldest brother, he said, I know what would even be funner. He said, let's go in Daddy's shed and get the gas and dip them down in the gas, and we'll light them. Then we'll throw them over the house. That's what we did. Well, my oldest brother was standing on that house, and he went, Shh, on the other side of the house, and, he went, and it come and hit me right in the head. <laughs> my hair's on fire. <laughs> so my brother, he's rolling me on the ground trying to get my hair <laughs> Guess what? Mother and Daddy comes home. <laughs> That's what we do in the Christian world. We play with fire. Mm -hmm. Guess what happened to us? Every one of us, Daddy. He didn't just paddle your butt, buddy. He whipped your rear end. You knew that you'd been whipped. But we were hard heads. Next couple times, mother and daddy left us alone. My oldest brother, he was always the instigator. <coughs> we had this butcher knife. Well, it was a what you call a chopping knife, I guess. It was kind of square, you like that. <coughs> so anyway, first, he told my youngest brother. Now, he didn't have the cleaver at first, but he told my youngest brother. He said, let me see how fast you can grab the carrot off the floor. Now, we're all sitting on the floor. <laughs> I forgot we got kids in here. <laughs> <laughs> we were sitting on the floor. Did you say that was a rubber <laughs> well, that got boring to him, too. So he said, okay, Joe. He said, I'm going to get this meat cleaver. He said, you grab for that and see if you can grab it. Well, about the time my brother went. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> we got in trouble. Why? Because we was hardheads. The point here is, that's the way most Christians are. We keep playing with the fire and keep playing with the butcher knives and keep playing with the guns, and what happens to us? Finally, we get blowed away because we didn't listen to the Father. Mm -hmm. See, we do stupid things. And I think about them times, even back when you're young and dumb, how God keeps his hand up over you. Because, I mean, he cut my brother, really. He didn't cut it off, but almost. He could have bled to death before Mother and Daddy got home. <laughs> That's only a few stories, honey. <laughs> and think about it. I was the baby, so, you know. <laughs> but that's true. That's how we do God. We keep playing with him. Keep playing with him. We keep being disobedient. But you know, the worse we got as kids, the harder daddy whipped us. Until we finally knew that he meant business. I never will forget, I was 15 years old when I got my last whipping from my daddy. It was about a month before I got married. It was his fault. <laughs> yeah, he laughed. I won't tell y'all that story because there is kids in here. <laughs> but it made us respect our parents. But it took four, five, six good whippings to make you understand. And I mean, and Daddy, he, he would tear your rear end up. You knew that you had been whipped. But you see, it's going to come a time, because let's use this for an example today. We got children, or let me say teenagers, that is rebellious as they can be. 
my daddy would have knocked my teeth down my throat. When I was a child growing up, it was yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. No, sir, and yes, sir. Nowadays, it's like, what? Or talk to the hand. What's wrong? But we're doing the same thing to God. We want to criticize and say, hey, we're not doing nothing wrong. But you are. If you're not doing what God's telling you to do, you're doing the same thing your kids are doing. You're being rebellious. The same identical thing. We have to understand, guys, that we got to get past this. we got to quit wavering. Amen? we got to either get on the pot or get off of it. Okay, now listen to this, guys. Where was we at? Verse number 16 says, Don't be misled, dear brothers and sisters. Whatever is good and perfect comes down to us from God our Father who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. And we, yeah, and we out of creation became his prized possessions. Whatever is good and whatever is perfect, God has given it to us. A lot of the bad we have is because we've either done it or somebody down our family caused us grief. But you don't have to be like that. I love unity. I love being around people that's one for all and, and all for one. You brothers and sisters, that's what we're supposed to be for each other. Amen? <clears throat> because whether we believe this or not, or whether you think you can continue to wallow in sin, someday you're going to stand before God. And then when God says, you remember that old gray-headed woman that was trying to tell you you're going to hell if you didn't change? Well, guess what? Goodbye. Fluke. I mean, come on. It's the truth. I don't want to see anybody go to hell because they don't want to do what they're supposed to do. And I know, I realize that the flesh is very weak. Even me. There's times it's like, <laughs> why? Because the devil wants you to fall. He wants you to fall. <clears throat> he wants this church to shut the doors on it. Not only this church, but every church. Especially the ones that's trying to do what God's told them to do. Why? Because it's being preached. God's word is being preached, and he don't want that. Amen? Verse number 19 says, now listen to this, guys. <clears throat> it says, uh, we're going to be here through in just a few minutes. It says, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen. Listen to what God is telling you. Rather, it's through God's word that you're reading yourself. Or if you're sitting in a church being preached to. Or if somebody just comes up to you and says, Hey, sister, God has told me to tell you something. Don't reject that. If you don't believe what that person is telling you, begin to pray. God, are you trying to tell me something? Am I being rebellious? Or you, have you sent this sister or have you sent this brother to me to say, Hey, Sister Sue, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing here. Listen. Because most of the time we turn a deaf ear to God. Because we don't want to hear it. Because this old flesh wants to do what it wants to do. Amen? Okay. It says, uh, be quick to listen and slow to speak. How many times do we flap our mouths when we shouldn't? That's one of the hardest things in the world is to keep your mouth shut, isn't it, by? Yep. Isn't it, by? Yep. Isn't it, by? <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yep. It's one of the hardest things in the world to say, you know what, I'm not going to say nothing on this account. I'm going to leave it alone. Isn't that right, Pastor? That was pretty good. But it ain't only for him. It ain't only for Vi. It's for all of us. A lot of times we're real quick to speak when we shouldn't. Listen, listen, because God is trying to talk to us. Amen? And it says, uh, and slow to get angry. How quick do we get ticked off? Come on. <clears throat> do we get ticked? I see you real good back there. Sister. Do we get ticked off really quick? How many in here does? Come on. 
If you don't, I want you to pray for me tonight. Come on. Do we realize that there's a many, many, many person in jail tonight because of anger? That's right. They let their temper flare up and they in jail. Amen? All right, guys, a couple of more scriptures and we're done. It says, uh, 20 says, human anger does not produce the righteousness of God desires. If we're out there cussing, slinging snot, and acting like a moron, then is that showing God's love? No, no it's not. Even though somebody is standing there cussing you out, saying all kind of words to you, I'd be lying right then because I wouldn't love them. <laughs> Ain't that right? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> but you've got to pray for that person. When somebody is cussing you or somebody is saying something ugly to you that they shouldn't be saying, we need to be praying for that person. Because you know what? They're lost. They're lost. It's the enemy that's in them. Not the person theirself is that enemy that has rose its ugly head. Amen? So we all need to pray that God will give us strength not to be ugly. Amen? All right, here we go. We got about three more little verses here, and we're going to shut down here. <clears throat> so it says, uh, So get rid of all the filth and e evil that's in your lives, and humbly accept the Word of God has planned in your heart, for it has power to save your souls. God's power can save our souls. We can't do it, but God can. We had, you hear what that said? Get rid of all the filth. All the filth that's in your life. Get rid of it. Whether you're lying, you're stealing, you're cheating, getting angry, being a moron. Y'all know what a moron is? Brother, <laughs> Sister Pam, I have a question for you, darling. You ever been to a church like this? <laughs> well, hey, will you ever come back to a church like this? <laughs> <laughs> or this church. <laughs> oh, well, God's good. <laughs> okay, here we go. All right, so anyway, you done sidetracked me, girlfriend. <laughs> but verse number 22 says, but don't just listen to God's word. Now, here's the clincher, guys. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you are only fooling yourselves. Don't just listen to what this word says. <clears throat> That's like I told you. If we're not going to do what God's word says, we might as well go honky-tonking. We might as well go shacking up. We might as well go smoking dope. We might as well go shooting up. Whatever you want to do, you might as well do it. There is something that you have to do with this Bible. You have to apply it to your lives. Amen. Because if you don't apply this Bible to your lives, you're going to do all just what I told you you was going to do. Why? Because that's where the enemy wants you. Temptation is there. We all face temptation every day of our life. I don't care how long you've been a Christian. You're going to face temptation. Why? Because Satan don't want you saved. That's exactly right. All right. <laughs> Verse number 23, we're going to quit at 25. It says, For if you listen to the word and don't obey it, it's like looking and glancing at your face in a mirror. You know how you look in a mirror? Then you turn around, it's gone. It's the same thing doing this right here. It's a, do you all understand what that means? If you don't take this word of God and apply it, then it's not doing you a bit of good. The devil knows the word from the front to the back, from the inside to the outside. But what happened to him? He decided he didn't want to do what was right. 
So therefore, if you're not going to do what it says, you might as well not mess with it. True? True. Verse number 24 says, You see yourself walk away and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Amen. You want to be blessed? Yep. Then do what God's Word tells you to do. Yep. Quit worrying about all the things that's going on in this world. You're not going to do anything about it anyway. All we can do is shine our light for men. But there's so many so-called Christians today, they're no different than the people out in this world. How many people do you really see that you want to follow? Ain't many. Why? Because people won't do it. They won't follow the Word of God. And to me, that's what a church is all about, is following, helping each other. Like I said a while ago, unity. You know that little song? You're my brother, you're my sister, so take me by the hand. I don't know the rest, but there you go. <laughs> you're my brother and you're my sister. We have to take each other's hand. There's time that we get weak. you got to hold your brother and sister up. Come on, sister. We're going to make it to the finish line. Come on, brother. We're going to make it to the finish line. But if we're not applying that word to our lives, then we're not going to be able to help each other. Because people see you. As we say all the time in this church, we're a lot of times we're the only Jesus people see. And if we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing, then what good is it doing, guys? What good is it doing? I want a church that's strong in God. I want a church... <coughs> That you know what, people's going to say, you know what, them people that go to that little old bitty church, now, buddy, they got it going on. They're peculiar. <laughs> We're very peculiar, all right. We're different. They don't act like the rest of the world. Am I condemning any church? No. Please don't take me wrong. I'm not condemning no church. But you know something? We have to be peculiar. We have to set ourselves against the world. We have to walk in the holiness that God told us to walk in. If we don't, we're only fooling ourselves. Amen? So what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to have an altar call.